Hello guys, and welcome back to the Book of Unwritten Tales, where we get to play as Wilbur this time, which is, I'm sure it's going to be awesome, because, you know, who doesn't love Wilbur, really? Okay, so, new chapter, or I guess this is a chapter, uh, as much of a chapter as there's going to be, probably, uh, switching between characters like that. So, I think we're gonna have about three million things to look at and interact with, and... Yes, I'm just gonna say yes. So let's start looking around our room, shall we? A beautiful golden ear trumpet. One of my predecessors must have laid it up there. A very tall predecessor. Well, everybody's tall compared to you. This has to be the oldest shoe I've ever seen. It's so old, it's even lost its ability to stink. Or maybe people clean it. That's strange. There's paper in the bottom of the shoe. Oh, maybe the shoe has a hole and the paper is supposed to protect the wearer from getting wet. Hmm, it's a sheet from a book. It's folded in the middle and printed on both sides. That equals four pages. It wasn't torn out. It looks more like the glue weakened and the sheet fell. I'll just take it with me. Okay, what is it? A folded sheet from a book. We're collecting a book now? Okay, sure. The entire school building is a bit scary. No one knows exactly where it was the last 20 years. It disappeared overnight and then reappeared just as suddenly once the war ended. There's a lot of magic in these old walls. The stove is always on, for example, and even though I've never put any wood in it... <laughs> A magical stove is a fine thing in winter, but in the summer, this small room could quickly become sweltering. But feel the heat. <laughs> okay, let's do that. I'm not sure how he's going to reach up there. Ow! That stone is definitely more than just warm. Ah, uh, okay, I thought it was just going to be up here, not all of it. Okay. A bowl of fresh, cool water for my roommate. Take the bowl full of water. There's no way I'm taking a bowl with me. I mean, how am I supposed to put a bowl of water into my pocket without getting my robe soaking wet? <laughs> it's not like I can just carry anything around. Hmm, but I could use the bowl here in the room. Ah, uh, so it's going to be one of those. Okay. Right. Uh, I, did, you know, I kind of was expecting one of those, like, just humongous item or, you know, something wet and something about it not being able to go in the inventory or something. This is Friedlin, my rabbit sheep. I had to cast a transformation spell during my mage training. And this is the And result. it's cute. <laughs> I think we make a good team. A young mage and his rabbit sheep fighting side by side as a force for good. Unfortunately, Friedlin doesn't do much other than lay in bed and eat. I still have to convince him it's important. I'm sure he gets it. He's just waiting for the right moment. Well, buddy. What are you eating there? Hey, that's my notepad. <laughs> Take the notepad. I might still need that notepad. Okay. Hey, I thought we were a team. Hmm, Friedling gets pretty grumpy when he's hungry. Truth be told, he's always hungry. So he's always grumpy. Okay. The bed is pretty cozy. It's so cozy that Friedling is curled up in it. But that's okay. Friends share. And he lets me sleep with the Oh, Wilbur. Surely, in a situation like this, I would have holed up in bed and hoped that everything would somehow take care of itself. But those days are gone. I'm a professor of magic, and I have to solve my own problems. The bed is pretty cozy, but that's okay. Okay, so it's just looping. Just always good to check, you know. Uh, take the notepad. That's the bed. Teddy. Look at the teddy, Wilbur. Come on. The teddy is just, uh, you know, a keepsake and some moral support from home. Soft and cuddly moral support. It's the best kind. <laughs> These are the aviator goggles that my granddad gave me before my first trip to Seastone. Well, a pair of aviator goggles. The original pair was lost when granddad fired me out of the cannon. Hmm. <laughs> 
That's when I found out Grandad has a whole box of these goggles. Every time he tries to persuade some idiot to do something stupid, he makes a rousing speech and then hands over his old aviator goggles. Seems like a good way to do it. <laughs> My whole family stayed in the White Ridge Mountains. Why would they even want to come to Seastone? This isn't their world. Little Sydney can walk now and reach everything that's on the workbenches. That tripled her invention output. Maggie doesn't build battle robots anymore since the war is over. Now she's experimenting with computing machines. But Grandad said there's no future in it. <laughs> yeah, there's no future in that at all. It wasn't easy to tell them I'm not an engineer, but a mage instead. Mum said she'd always suspected it. <laughs> and a wand? Ah, my wand. The King of Thieves got it for me during my mage training. He and the other rats have been tirelessly helping to rebuild the city in recent months. They work closely with the Archmage, albeit mostly in secret. <laughs> well, let's pick up our wand then, shall we? I still haven't figured out exactly how it works. Sometimes it performs the most amazing magic, and sometimes it can't even perform the simplest of tasks. Archmage Alistair has promised to have a look at it sometime. Maybe it has a loose connection or something. Yeah, I'm sure it's the equipment, not the user, you know. Mages use balls like this to communicate over long distances. Master Marcus explained it to me. He'll know how I can tame those unruly students. So, what was that number again? Six, four, seven, three, one? Hello. Ah! Oh, wrong number! It's okay, so we have to find this number then? <laughs> Look at the magical contract. This is my contract, signed by the Archmage. I'm the first teacher in the School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. At least, the first since the school reappeared. At first, I didn't want to accept. I know almost nothing about magic. But Master Alistair said there are very few mages left, and I had completed mage training faster than anyone else. I was the right person for the job. I wanted to help and learn more about magic, so I agreed. Hopefully that was the right decision. I wouldn't want to disappoint Master Alistair. No, Wilbur definitely wouldn't. Uh, so we have junk and a magic set, okay? It looked like this before I ever moved in. Generations of teachers must have left their stuff here. I like it. The school is a history and when I have time, I'll rummage through it. So do it now. A few of the crates and boxes are labelled. Hands off. Property of the Half-Blood Prince. Schrodinger. Hmm, that box could hold a dead cat. Or not. That's like double referencing. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Master Marcus and the Archmage were so busy rebuilding the city that no one had the opportunity to teach me anything about teaching. This box was in a shop window down in the city. I thought it might be useful. After all, there are children with magic wands on it. But unfortunately, it just seems to be a bunch of those tricks. Like that old one with Mr. Wupperman, the top hat and the rabbit. We'll definitely have some use of, out of that. Short white rope, a pair of dice, playing cards, and a guide on how to lead people up the garden path. That's just not right. Real magic or none at all. I'm sure we can still use something from it. It can't be healthy in the long run for Fridolin to always eat parchment and old scrolls. Perhaps he'd like the pet food I bought. I'm sure he won't. <laughs> okay, let's look at the wand as well. Sometimes my wand works perfectly and sometimes less so. I don't quite have the hang of it yet. Sometimes my wand... Fridolin might prefer green grass or fresh carrots, but all I could find in the city was this pet food. Mm, okay. Fridolin well, might let's see if we give it. I'm sure you want, but... Okay, we'll do it like this. I'll give you some delicious pet food, and you give me my notebook back. Okay, buddy? <coughs> All right. <laughs> first. Okay. Now give me my notebook, please. Hey, I thought we had a deal. 
I think the deal was Friedlin eat more. Okay, fine. One more time. I give you proper food, and you give me my. Ouch. Okay, fine. And now. You can't always just take the friendship, you know. Maybe we. I don't know. It's it's probably not gonna work. Okay, fine. No. God, that's a long animation. <laughs> okay. F yeah. Okay. So that's he's just not gonna. So do we cast a spell on the food? No, apparently not. Transform Fridolin? No, we don't want to do that. No, that's just wrong. Uh, maybe we try calling again. I can't remember Master Marcus's number. I had it written in my notebook. Ah, okay. So how about we give that to Fridolin? You want some water, Fridolin? Yes. Be hungry more than oh, anything. it's a no. Okay. Uh, then I'm not quite sure what to do with the water. Because, yeah, we can give Freeloose, Freeland something to drink, and that's it. Unless we give this. I'm not sure Freeland would prefer this paper to that in my pad. Besides, I might still need the book page for something. Okay, so we can't lure him away with that yet. Yet. Uh, sprinkle food on the bed. Hmm, maybe I can lure Friedlin away from my notepad. That's it. That's all there is. Hey, Friedlin, look, food. All you have to do is hop over here and get it. Too much effort. Oh. <laughs> wow! My rabbit sheep has superpowers. But now the food is gone and Fridlin is still hungry. Well. Ah, no wonder I didn't do it right. Supposed to warm it up? It says, space saving instant dry food. Soak in water before feeding. Uh -oh. Ah, crap. Empty dry food package. Friedelin's crazy about this stuff, and I've never even prepared it properly. So what happens now if we make Friedelin drink? She's gonna explode. How about some water to wash the food down? That's what I thought. Food was pretty dry, right? Uh oh. <laughs> See how well I take care of you. Then maybe we could talk about my notebook. <laughs> Oops. Um. Ah, uh, I'll um. I'll read the instructions next time. Promise. Sorry. Okay. Well, at least we're all freeling on the side. <laughs> yes. So we have our notebook. Oh, poor Friedlin. The way he looks at the moment, he could give Bertram the world's fattest hamster a run for his money. But he'll get back to normal. A short nap and he'll be right as rain. I, I'm not sure he can really sleep like that, but sure, well enough. Nibbled notepad. It says, Master Marcus, only in emergencies. Six four one seven nine. This is definitely an emergency. I'm losing my student's respect before I even had it. Yeah, so let's call him. Well, six, four, one, seven, and um, nine. Hopefully this will work this time. Yes? Hello? Master Marcus! Wilbur, what is it? Um, yeah, my students are always asking me questions. Yes. Ah, you have to help me, Master Marcus. The students, they're always asking me questions. Of course, you're their teacher. But I don't know the answers. I've only been a teacher for a few days and I'm all alone. 
and the school is eerie and there's no textbooks and no one wants to learn anything. And